Yes, yes, yes. On February 1st, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the U.S. would withdraw from its nuclear weapons control treaty with Russia over alleged Russian noncompliance, which Russia, of course, denies. Since 1987, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty has required the U.S. and Russia to eliminate and abandon the development of certain weapons that launch from the ground and reach specific distances. The weapons include cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and missile launchers. In response to the news, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that Russia will also suspend participation in the treaty. Jimmy, this is really dangerous. The treaty got both superpowers to reduce their nuclear arsenals and get rid of an entire category of nuclear weapons. It also established a system for conducting and verifying arms inspections. It's no secret that the United States and Russia have both been working to modernize and update their arsenals. Is this the perfect excuse? Well, if both countries are truly dedicated to nuclear non-proliferation, they of course can talk through their issues and try to resolve them. But do you really think that's going to happen? I mean, look at the Iran nuclear deal, for example. No, I don't think that's going to happen at all. In fact, in, fa in March of last... What do you think these countries should do? Give them some advice moving forward. Give Trump and Putin advice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my advice would be to get back into the tree. The Senate Intelligence Committee has not found any direct evidence of a conspiracy between Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and the Russian government. Special counsel Robert Mueller still has not released the findings of his investigation, but that's expected to end soon. Anything can happen, but the Senate findings offer clues about what we might see down the line, Jimmy. Are you surprised by the results? Did you ever think there was going to be a smoking gun? Well, I'm not surprised by the results, and the reason why I'm not surprised by the results is because I actually listen anger about the prospects of an American president taking money from a foreign interest and enriching himself while subverting democracy highlights a glaring problem. Why does everyone care when a foreign government is accused of paying a politician off to pass laws in its favor, but not when it's happening domestically here at home? Is it because one is considered illegal while the other is legal and it's just business as usual? Robert Mueller has been very quiet about his ongoing investigation. Do you think it's possible that he's going to find the smoking gun tying Trump to Russia? Or do you expect that his findings won't be that different from the Senate's? Uh, I don't do Moving on to other news. A pension crisis is brewing in America. The first signs showed up last year in Kentucky when the state revealed it had blown $43 billion in retirement funds promised to government employees, including teachers, firefighters, and police. What's so insane is that the state had all these funds in 2002. So what happened? For decades, politicians in Kentucky resisted raising taxes to fund government services like roads, schools, and other public necessities. It then made up for its funding woes by diverting payments away from the state's pension fund to cover the shortfall. When Kentucky retirement systems began feeling the strain, it started making incredibly risky Wall Street investments in hopes of digging the state out of the pension hole. But when the stock market crashed and later hit a recession, the system bled even more money. Jimmy, when we think of government employees, it's not just Congress members and the president that we're talking about. They're hardworking local and state public servants who also deserve to have their retirement funds not gambled away. What is your reaction to this story? He sits down with author and journalist Matt Taibbi to discuss his latest book, Hate Inc. We'll be right back. The viewers. We ask people on social media, why don't most American families make saving for retirement a priority? Eric says, even those who have bought homes as a retirement investment are screwed. $7.50 per hour is not going to get the next generation a mortgage. How do you respond? Yeah, uh, I have no idea how people can afford my 2008. Maggie says, I've tried several times to protect my retirement, but at every attempt, a 401k was drained for some unplanned yes. emergency. Over the years, it got harder and harder to spare. Now it's impossible to make that up. Yeah, I... Uh, Next week's episode, when we talk about the history of the Pentagon's research and development agency known as DARPA. The world according to Jesse.